Hello everybody, and welcome back to Let's Play A Golden Wake. Last time, we got a pilot, stopped a bank robbery, and helped fix the plane, but the plane still needs one more part. But how are we going to get it if there's a guard guarding all the plane, other planes that have the part that we need? Well, let's go back to the diner and see our brother, Bo. Hey, Bo. Alfie! What's going on? This is a quaint little place. I've never been here myself. It is, isn't it? Kinda reminds me of the one back home we used to go to. I can see it, sure. But all these diners tend to look the same after a while. There's something about this one. I don't know how to describe it, but it feels special somehow. Why don't you get a job here? I just might, actually. Really? I was just pulling your leg. You're telling me you actually want to work? Is it that hard to believe? To be perfectly frank, yes. What's made you change your mind? Leaving the city, coming down here... I guess it's just made me realize I need to be independent. Alright, good for you. I get a 9 to 5. That's, that's what everybody should be doing. How's... How's Mother doing? She's okay. Coping. Like I said, she's got friends who keep her company. It's been nearly 10 years since Father died. She needs to move on. Tell me something I don't know. In a way, I think my moving down here will do her some good. She'll realize she has a life to live on her own. I certainly hope so. Alright. How's New York doing? Has New York changed much? You've been gone less than four months. How much could it have possibly changed? You'd be surprised, Bo. Although, to tell the truth, I get the feeling this city will be almost unrecognizable in a few years. Just the way of the world, I suppose. You really give me the heebie-jeebies when you get all philosophical like that, Alfie. Oh, let's uh, offer him a car ride in our jalopy. Hey, Bo! How'd you like to go for a drive? Really? Where to? How uh, about the men's Wanna club? Wanna come mingle at the men's club? I'm not really in the mood to listen to a bunch of old men tell stories. Maybe we could go someplace else? Alright, alright. Come with me to the sales office? You can see where I work. If it's all the same, I'd rather not. I'll probably just get in the way. Okay, well, where we want to take him is the marina. How about Dinner Key Marina? You can look at the boats in the ocean. Sounds like the bee's knees. Let's go. Okay, so, um, uh, let's talk to Bo here. Bo, come over here. What is it? I need you to do me a favor and chat up the security guard. Tell him you own that hydroplane over there. What? Why? Just trust me. Oh, and if he starts asking you questions about it, just make something up. I get the feeling he isn't exactly the sharpest knife in the drawer. Um, okay, if you say so. <laughs> I know, he didn't seem that dumb to me. But uh, now that uh, the guard is distracted, let's go check that engine. And I believe that's the magneto right there. You examine the engine closely. If you're going to do anything with it, you should, you'll should. you need something more than just your bare hands. Luckily, we have ourselves a wrench. Working quickly, you liberate the magneto from the plane's engine. All right. So now that we have that, Come let's on, get Bo. going. Let's head back. Looks like this guy's gonna get fired, probably. That was fun. I'm glad we made it back in one piece. Thanks for the ride, Alfie. Guess he's saying that because the uh, car sucks. Anyway, um, uh, we have the money here for them, so let's give it to them while we're here. Here you go. I believe this takes care of your payment. Certainly does. Much appreciated. And now let's go to uh, the uh, plane yard and give the part to the mechanic. I like how when you're completely done with an area, most of the time it just takes it off the map so you know that there's absolutely nothing else that you need. Really helpful. Alright, here you go, sir. Is this the sort of magneto you need for the engine? It sure is. How were you able to get one so quickly? I have my ways. 
Well, you really saved me some time. I'll get to work replacing this right away. Fantastic. Here's your wrench back, by the way. <laughs> the mechanic eyes you with a suspicious expression. Thanks. Hey, you've really helped me out with getting this plane fixed. It should be ready by tomorrow. Feeling satisfied that you've taken care of all the arrangements for the air show, you head back to the office to inform Mr. Merrick and begin preparations. This is it. Are you ready? I think so, Flyboy. Are you kidding? I was born ready! Only thing is, we can't seem to find Dave. Who? The fellow who drives me over to the plane so I can climb on it. Quite a turnout today, Banks. Seems Merrick has got a lot riding on this little show. Feeling nervous? Nervous? Me? Of course not. Oh, by the way, Miss Cody, I ran into someone named Dave on my way over, and he said to tell you he wasn't feeling well. At least, I think that's what he said. He was a bit hard to understand, to be honest. <sighs> he probably got in the curly secret stash of corn whiskey again. Well, looks like we're gonna need another driver if we aim to get this stunt performed today. I'll drive the car. You sure? You ain't practiced with us before. How hard could it possibly be? Don't worry, Banks. With a pilot of my skill, this will be like shooting fish in a barrel. It will be, assuming you ain't one of those all hat and no cattle types. I have no idea what that's supposed to mean, but I'm sure this will all go down without a hitch. All right, let's get this done. We've got a crowd to impress. And now we have a little mini game okay, here. Okay, Banks, it's as simple as cow pie. All you gotta do is keep her steady and let Curly know when to lower the top. That'll signal Flyboy. When the plane comes, keep her at the right speed and position so I can climb up on it. I wanna check something real quick. Are there any... Uh, no history. I knew there was something here. Okay, so um, uh, you can move left and right. And you have the gas pedal, the brake pedal. What you wanna do is uh, slow down and then open this up. If you try to open it up when you're going fast. Picking up a heck of a lot of dust. Uh, it won't let you. Is that going to be a problem? Nah, makes things more exciting, like a cattle stampede. Okay, now uh, speed up. And just wait, and move over to where the exits. Pretty easy. If you fail this, it'll just let you do it as many times as you need to. Oh no, she's lost her grip. Thanks. Do something! I can't hold on much longer! Uh -oh. She won't be able to climb up the ladder if she doesn't regain her footing! So this is a little bit less obvious, but it's kind of intuitive. You want to go back, you want to raise the thing back up again, go forward, and let her stand Mabel, on top. step on the car roof so you can get your footing back! Yee-haw! That did her! Thanks, Alfie! Alright. Starting spectacle at robbery at Bank Foiled by Banks. As me, that Marjorie Stillman Douglas certainly knows how to write an article. You feel extremely pleased with yourself, but also hope you can settle back into a less exciting work for a while. The years pass and continue, and you continue working diligently. Although somewhat frustrated with the slow pace of your success, you feel certain that something big is on the horizon. Oh, 1925, so I think it's been so five years. So they finally gave me my own sales team after I practically had to beg them for it. No kidding. I'm glad to hear they've finally come around. You get your own office, too? No, not yet. Ah, well, things will work themselves out. I mean, it's only been, what, three years? Four, actually. <laughs> well, you can't expect to become an overnight success, especially not with such a risky project. Have they at least given you a nicer car? No, I'm still driving that old green heap around. Ah, I see. Well, business talk aside, How's your brother doing? Good, as far as I know. I haven't really spoken to him in a couple of months. Last I heard, he was going back to visit our mother. Wouldn't surprise me if he was asking to borrow some money. But then that's Bo for you. Born with a silver spoon in his mouth and spoiled rotten ever since. Anyway, Meeks, it was a pleasure catching up, but I really should be going. Have a good one, Banks. Now, I don't really like that saying, born with a silver spoon in your mouth, because, yeah, people are born into rich families, but you can't equate everyone based on where they were born. I mean, look at Alfie. He's working hard being successful, even though he was born into the exact same family. Oh, well. Anyway, let's, uh... Mr. Banks, oh. a message came for you from Mr. Merrick. He said to meet him at his mother's home as soon as possible. Thank you, Morris. All right, so uh, let's go see Mr. Merrick. Yeah, the only reason that he meets you at his mother's house is just for the, because um, 
Francisco Gonzalez wanted another historical uh, place, so this is... It's been a while since I've been here. I wonder why George invited me. This is the Merrick home, which I guess is a landmark in uh, Florida. I know there's some history. Yeah, here we go. The Merrick family was from New England and lived in New York State for a time. But four years before moving to Florida, they lived in Duxbury, Massachusetts, which was very close to Boston. George's father, Solomon Merrick, was a minister, and his mother, Althea, was an artist. Unfortunately, in the winter of 1899, one of the Merrick daughters died of diphtheria, and Solomon Merrick's health began to decline. Althea's father suggested that they move down south to a warmer climate in the newly established city of Miami. So, sight unseen, the Merricks purchased a 160-acre homestead five miles from the city of Miami in the back country of Coconut Grove. George and his father went ahead of the family to prepare the homestead, and when they arrived, they found that all they had was some scrubby pine land. There was a shack and a bunch of guava trees, but since they had spent most of their money on purchasing this land, they decided to make the best of it. George sold their first harvest of guavas from the trees to a man in Coconut Grove, which they then in turn used to buy vegetables, which George planted in the area which is now the Granada Golf Course. When they harvested the vegetables, George would get on a cart driven by a mule and go four hours to the city of Miami selling the vegetables door to door. Althea, meanwhile, convinced the Dade County School Board to open a school in a cabin on their property. It opened up in 1901. In the same year, Solomon Merrick became minister of the Coconut Grove Union Church. Meanwhile, George and his father planted a grove of grapefruits. During all this time and difficulty, Solomon's motto was, things would be better when the groves begin to bear. In 1907, the groves finally did begin to bear and brought the Merricks a steady income which allowed George to go off to college. Around that time, Althea designed a house made of rock to replace the pioneer cabin that they had been living in, and in 1910, the house was completed. Since it was made of coral rock, the house was named Coral Gables, and still stands at the same spot today. Now that is awesome. That is the American dream, if I ever heard it. Working hard and having it bear fruit. Quite literally and figuratively for these people. Hello, Alfie. Glad you could make it. Thanks for having me. It's great seeing you all, although I have to confess I'm a bit confused as to why I'm here. I'm glad to see he's managed to stay modest. It is one of his better qualities, Mother. I just wanted to say that over the past few years, you've been extremely valuable to us. Not only have you helped immensely with establishing Coral Gables, you've also managed to climb the ranks in the office in a relatively short amount of time. Oh, George, stop beating around the bush, would you? He knows what he's accomplished. What he's trying to say, Alfie, is that you're a man who can get things done. And as it happens, we need you for something very important. Yes. Thank you, Eunice. My dear wife, always to the point. In any case, we're getting close to incorporating Coral Gables as a city, and that requires a special team. A team I want you to be a part of. I'm honored, sir. As I'm sure you've heard, we're only a day away from launching our electric streetcar line. We'll be having a ceremony to commemorate the launch, but we'll also be making a very important announcement. The new mayor of Coral Gables. M mayor Yes. Every new city needs a mayor. Since we're not a very big city, we have the luxury of foregoing elections and having the first one appointed. I think announcing the mayor along with the streetcars will bring heaps of publicity. Wouldn't you say so, Miss Douglas? I've already got most of the article written. Just need to punch it up a bit with the details. Why not bring in someone well-known to make a speech at the ceremony? That would certainly make an impression. I thought you might suggest something like that, Banks. Did you have anyone in mind? Not for certain, but I'm sure I can find someone in town. I might be able to help you there, Alfie. Well then, I look forward to seeing what you accomplish. Hmm, so we have a new task to find somebody important to make a speech at the uh, opening of the uh, new streetcars in the town. So we have a few people to talk to. Miss uh, Douglas here. Marjorie is no longer a reporter for the Herald. Rather, she's finally achieved her goal of becoming a freelance writer. She's been doing lots of promotional material for, material for Mr. Merrick of late. I'm eager to see what you come up with, Banks. There never seems to be a dull moment with you around. And not much to say with her. Eunice Merrick, uh, maiden name Peacock, is George's wife. You've known her for a few years now, and she's always been very kind to you. Despite coming from quite an affluent family, she is very humble and down-to-earth. Good afternoon, Eunice. Good afternoon, Alfie. What's on your mind? How have you been? 
It's been a while since I last saw you. It really has been too long, Alfie. But I've been well, thank you. Mostly busy with the PTA at the school George built a couple of years ago. We should have these little gatherings more often. You know you're always welcome here. Aww. You're his wife. Surely George has let something slip about who's going to be mayor. Oh, Alfie, you know how George is about secrecy. Even if he had told me, I couldn't say. Especially considering he's standing right over there. Hello. <laughs> You'll find out along with the rest of us. All right, all right. So yeah, that secret, he's been keeping that for four years. Wow. Any insights on places I might be able to find someone well-known to speak at tomorrow's event? I haven't really been out much lately, but I've heard that the Venetian pool is drawing quite the crowd. It's a beautiful day. Why not go there and get some sun? You might meet someone interesting, too. I just might do that. Thanks. Venetian I'll pool. speak to you later. Okay. We did hear about a pool project a few years ago, so I guess he uh, got that one done. Was a lovely landscape signed by a D. Fink. Althea keeps several trinkets on her mantle. They look like they're very old. An old piano takes up one corner of the room, and you wonder who the musician of the family is. What do you have to say, Mr. Merrick? I greatly appreciate your help, son. You truly go above and beyond the call of duty. Well, you I know, greatly appreciate I want to... George always get, seems to get a wistful look in his eye when he's in this house. Hmm. Althea Merrick, George's mother, she's told you many stories about the family's journey down from Massachusetts at the beginning of the century. You admire and respect her, and she's shown you a similar attitude. Hello, Mrs. Merrick. Hello, dear. How have you been feeling? Just fine, thank you. I'm content to stay in and watch everything going on around. I'm impressed by all the changes myself. I can't imagine what it must be like for someone who's lived here for so long. I'm curious to know what this place will look like in five years. I hope to be around to see it. Oh, I'm sure you will. Let's hope so. You must be proud of your son. Extremely. George always did have ambitions, but to see him succeed... From what George has told me, I'm sure your parents are proud of you too. I... yes, I think they are. Let's hope so. Would you happen to have an idea of where I might be able to find some well-known people in the community to speak at tomorrow's event? Hmm... well, I don't get out too much these days. But I've heard that some notable people have been playing at the Biltmore Golf Course. Great. I'll swing by. Uh, no pun intended. <laughs> nice talking with you. Always a pleasure, my dear. And I believe there is also some history here. Eunice Merrick was originally known as Eunice Peacock, and she came from one of the more important families in South Florida. Her grandparents, Charles and Isabella Peacock, were some of the first permanent settlers in the South Florida area. In 1883, they built a hotel called the Bayview House, which was the first hotel in Florida south of Palm Beach. Later on, it went to become the Peacock Inn, and several people would come stay there and liked it so much that they decided to stay. And so a little community grew around them and ended up being called Coconut Grove, which is still a neighborhood in Miami today. Marjorie Stoneman Douglas had a house there in the 20s, as did William Jennings Bryan. All right. So, there's a lot of, uh, history with these people here. So yeah, these are, of course, real people. Merrick's mother and Merrick's wife. So, now we need to, uh, go find somebody important to go speak at the opening of the streetcars. But who can we find? And where can we find them? Well, you're just gonna have to find out next time on Let's Play A Golden Wake. Thank you for watching, and have a good day.